everyone, and welcome to yet another lifting episode. Uh, today's episode was recorded on 9 28, 2023. Uh, this is going to be fairly fascinating. This goes off of some of the things you've heard on GIC over the years and on the lifting over the years. Uh, you may have even seen me repost the uh, Simon Parks interviews as one episode uh, that talk about Atlantis and Lemuria which is fairly fascinating, but um, you've heard us also on GIC over the years talk about the same, where different groups have come in that are in different layers, different things like from the Mayan Federation to the ones in Agartha, the, uh, to Holm and his family that are in the other frequency, you have the ones in the other pocket uh, that Mu is still intact within. So you have at least a few different groups here, and plus you have the variety of others, like some of the forest people groups that have look like the Samoan type groups, uh, the, the shorter neck ones, those are the marine descendants. You have the, the Syrian descent lineage. You have some Larian, Larian and you have uh, some dogmen, um, same as on Atlantis. You have a lot of these. So uh, I'm going to uh, op now open this circle to a true benevolence with no conflicting agendas. So, uh, Joanna? We are all one. And one is harmed, all are harmed, and one is helped, all are helped. Therefore, in the name of who I am, and I am one with all there is, that only the highest good be done. We pray for you, your friends, your family, your loved ones, to let healing energies in. Let them love you and nourish you and bring you to your highest good. We pray for ourselves, our friends, our family, our loved ones. Again, to let healing energies in, to let them love you and nourish you and bring you to your highest good. We ask for benevolence to join us now with no conflicting agenda. Those beings or friends or guides uh, who wish to come in and hear and or participate in this conversation that we're going to have today, we ask for uh, also for any malevolent or mischievous energies that wish to um, make it uh, more uh, difficult to have this conversation and or impede an understanding to please kind of be swept away so we can have a conversation free and clear. And again, blessings and and uh, highest good to everyone out there. So with this and an agreement, we say so be it. Be it. So if anybody has looked at our material, and I'll give a rundown here, uh, looked at our material they know about a, a group that that people channel out there called uh, they call they call them the Lemurian Council, but the Lemurian Council actually existed fifteen thousand plus years ago. What happened on Lemuria when it was in the peaceful times? Atlantis and Lemuria actually had an alliance at one time, uh, and the uh, eventually this degraded down into a war with both uh, both continents. And uh, when the Orions began to get a bigger foothold on Atlantis, Atlantis started to decay first. Uh, oh, ooh, that was a major conf uh, confirmation there. Somebody was excited. I mentioned that time frame. So whereas when the AI or the Orion signal came across, utilizing the women of Atlantis, which eventually regurgitated in World War II as the Vril, then you have the scientists of Atlantis opening a bridge that sent a signal through and the existing transhumanism that people were falling for over a period of time, getting into their mental decay, pretty much transformed some of them into more Terminator-esque type of uh, things. Very much like in Terminator Salvation, where you have the nanotech transform a human into a robot. It's uh, it's that type of exact type of situation. That's what I got the idea from. And I've even had dreams of these robotic beings walking on the Atlantic Ocean as a result. On the flip side, on the Pacific side. You have Lemuria, and you have uh, you have their council. Then the Syrian slash Orion stockracy pretty much took over there, dissolved the council, and they began a royal like blue bloods type of situation there. Eventually, they became the elitist class, very much like you saw in Egypt during that uh, during just before the intermediate period, where they revolted against the elitists there. And they became slightly more expanded after that. It's the same thing, where they eventually the natives, like what you would see as native Hawaiians, this would be Mu Lemuria, revolted against the the Syrian uh, oppressors at that time. And uh, what ended up happening during the final moments, people believe Lemuria sank. Yes, you can say this, 
But Lemuria, you have one patch that was Lemuria, and the outer whole continent was Mu. People always mix these two up. Uh, it's like mixing up ghost and spirit or soul and oversoul. You know, it's uh, think of Lemuria as like a soul. You think Mu is the oversoul, you know, kind of thing. Uh, so people always mix up. It's like continent, country, or world and planet. So what, what happened was the Lemurian city, very much like you had on Atlantis, like they depicted in Stargate Atlantis, could actually lift off as a, a vessel. Well, the center point could actually lift off as a ship or a flying city. It, that's actually true. What happened during when the Orions were invading that time frame? This is they uh, the Lemurians like to say it thanks in mostly part to Atlantis, uh, but uh, you know of uh, making the of kind of Faustian pacts and whatnot. But they also were to blame to to an extent by allowing the, the uh, Orions meat puppets, the Syrian groups, to come in and the Dark Elves to come in and start overlording them. In the final moments, you had. Uh, that ship that lifted off and went out into the Pleiades. And that's also where some of the original colonists came from. So in that time, you had part of Mu that sunk. There was like a larger world within world that became more of the home of some of the Lemurians. Some of them went into the inner earth. And then some of them also became some of our Mayan and native tribes. You hear us talk about the Mayan Federation. The ones went out into space, dismantled that city, and became the ships, that uh, their, their fleet that's out there in the Pleiades. A planet called Maya, that's where turquoise comes from. So uh, just as good as Shungai, because it was also created to fight AI, black goo, AI intrusions. That It's a very good filter in that way. And dream filter, I might add. That's why it's great to use on dream catchers. Dream catchers, the Mayan Federation, I do want to say one point had dream catchers that were pieces of equipment that would grab the, the tulpa or thought form type of energies that came in. Our native tribes saw that and started making dream catchers as a result. I'm not poo-pooing one over the other. One might be a cargo cult of the other, like you saw in the Pacific with uh, American soldiers that went over to the Philippines and they started mimicking them. It's kind of similar, like you saw in Star Trek Voyager where the natives were mimicking Seven's markings and, and Chakotay's markings. Similar. But there's all doesn't mean that there isn't magic and wisdom still there. Now, uh, after this took place with Lemuria, they went over to the uh, Marquesas, the remaining uh, the Syrians that escaped from there, and a couple of their Orion overlords escaped from there, went to the Marquesas, and that's where you get some of the stories from uh, of you know about the it's, it was the outer edge of uh, it was basically the eastern edge of. Lemuria. Then they went over to Easter Island, and that's where you get the bird cult thing and the cannibalism that took place long after that when they used up all the resources, uh, basically ba making them unbalanced with the Earth the natives that were eventually there that were also descendants of Lemuria uh, people. This happened over a period of time. This wasn't like all at once. Uh, but the bird cult that formed. When I remote viewed that, I saw this angel-like form that was there that had like a bird-like face and everything. And I knew that was that was an Orion form there, like Anunnaki. But this uh, this particular group that talks you know, the, of all these different groups that I mentioned from Mind Federation to the one in their other bubble to the underground ones to the ones that are actually still in Hawaii that communicate with people to this day. They are that. I believe they are that mixed with the one in the other bubble. I believe this particular group has a bit of a bone to pick or grievance. Uh, a bone to pick is probably too strong of a term. It's more like a mild grievance, mild grievance. Okay. With channelings that are out there, they're basically saying like the forest people have had similar grievances. There were forest people there as well. So they have similar grievances with some of the information that is out there that is on uh, Lemuria in particular. Am I, am I correct? Yes. And are people and are people actually channeling you guys? Uh, looks like we have uh, or or not. Yes and no. Uh, you might remember from my earlier channelings of being by the name of Tuholm. 
uh, the, you know, they, uh, they say the Murian Council, but the council existed quite a while ago, and I believe people are connecting to the time frame <laughs> of the Lemur original Lemurian Council when they get uh, get channelings from, or uh, uh, yeah, they're connecting, or they're getting a residual about what was was there, and I don't think it's there anymore sort of thing. It's just like when somebody remote viewed the Cydonian Plateau on Mars, they, they were connecting to a man that was in the past that happened at the time of the last great conflict in the solar system. I believe they were connected. Oh, okay. 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 I just uh, got this major, major hit there. Uh, the, the grievance here is if I'm translating this correctly, guys, tell me if I'm wrong, but the, what I'm translating here is some of the channelings people are getting about upcoming disasters, upcoming upheavals, upcoming, Correct on all counts. Okay. Things that happened already. Uh, it's like people always think of like an apocalypse or like a fake alien invasion or something like that. And it's really something that happened in the past, like with Asgard exploding, for instance, or Mars getting damaged or something like that. It's exactly along those lines. You guys are trying to tell me most of the people are communicating with Earth's past. You have it. Oh, with certain alignments, they're connecting meridian-wise to something in the past. That's because that's how strings and portals work. They they connect to the geographical opposite, but you may end up 10,000 years ago, or you may end up 1,000 years in the future. You know, you uh, certain alignments are different now. The poles have shifted. They're different. So with the current rotation, you guys are telling me that the continental drift, just like with Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, it's the same thing, where he made fun of the Nazis by not counting for continental drift. It went back to Archimedes' time frame, which it was always entangled to. They're telling me it's the same thing where the coordinates have changed and people are connecting with something because they have they have an affinity for because they were there. They have a self there, is what I'm being told. It's like they're connecting uh to a place in history. Like it may feel like home. And bio rights, it is, but they're connecting to a point pre disaster. Are they doing that with Atlantis too? Okay, they're connecting place uh, a spot before the wars began or the fall. They're, they 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 think it's all happy, happy, joy, joy because they're not seeing the rest of this. Is what you're saying because they are anchored to a point before. Okay, all right, that actually makes sense. That and they're also being lied to by Orion stuff and everything. But are you saying that there is no Lemurian Council anymore? Off and on. It's not like it was originally, like how the people are seeing it. Are, how many false channelings are there getting out there? Uh, is this um, What is the main point of contention for this conversation? Uh, we'll just call it the Lemurian grievances and concerns. Oh, yeah, you find that funny, actually. Uh, but uh, <laughs> which one am I speaking to? Or is it to Holm and his family? Because I'm seeing two distinct groups here, like an ancient Mayan type of one with the feathering and stuff like that. And I'm seeing um, to Holm and your family, which means I'm we're dealing with the space ones and we're dealing with the, the Garthen esque ones. Wrong? Well, who are the ones with the feathers? Then? Well, again, which one is current present moment? I'm curious about in this. And it tied to this time are both of them. Okay, which one? Okay, yeah. True benevolence with no conflicting agendas, as we've said before. Which one is concurrent with our current present moment? Please tell me, or please show me as well. Ooh. That wiped out, well, not, not wiped out, wrong choice of words. That moved another group totally, the one with the feathers. The one that remained was the, the the ones that you look like you're wearing Hawaiian shirts, but that's not right. The uh, my my brain's decoding it that way. Uh, you look like you have Hawaiian shirts on, but that's more that's just the style. Okay. Oh, it's better if you just say it. Okay. They said I'm comprehending it, but I'm not talking quick enough. So okay. Mm. Okay. <clears throat> to home? Okay. We've not heard from you in a long time. Since a couple of Halloweens ago, in fact. 
So. Through the crystal, ironically, I have a big Lemurian crystal sitting here that happened to line up right to today. So, hold on, blockish. Okay, benevolent to home only. Boy, there the amulet's reacting to a lot of. Annoyances, uh, paying attention to this. So, I must to be brief. I am to home, and I am what you would see as like a Lemurian council member. Some people have gotten this in their heads that this is a thing in the here and now. Just like you have your Pleiadian Council of Nine and stuff like that. No. When Chuanda brought that information through that, it was 100% incorrect. There is no Pleiadian Council of Nine that's just like your nine uh, or six of the Egyptian deities being channeled as the nine. It's the same crap uh, group. Was he correct on Mayan technology? Yes, for the Mayan Federation. Whereas the bridge is in the center, you have a large ship, and you have the bridge bridge in the center with the control center and the storage on both sides. Some of them are salvage people uh, that work for the Mayan Federation and GF, unfortunately. Uh, their federation uh, had to make a tenuous deal with the Galactic Federation because those that don't make Certainly, even tenuous deals with the Galactic Federation tend to, hmm, how can I put this, kind of get assimilated, very much like in your Starfield game, where there was an Earth Federation and their GF facsimile that Ward and the GF won that one. They don't want worlds that are not part of their membership. So if there is another Federation, they make tenuous deals with them. That's good enough for them, like for trade, exclusivity, things of that nature. Think just asshole pirates in that fascist pirates in that way. But uh, our group, uh, we are descendants, uh, except for one of us that was around at that time. Of the uh, original Lemurian council members and those that revolted against the Syrian, uh, he said, autocracy or rulership or kingship this is where you get blue bloods from some of the blue skin uh lizards as well and orions there's like a blue factor to the blood this is where you get the royalty blue blood type of uh situation atlantis too but with uh this yes there were some ancient mayans over there as well there was one by the name of illumina jetty that uh, stayed on the the atlantean council representing lemuria uh, but with this, the grievance that, is, that we have is there are plenty of channelings out there. Unfortunately, some of your past stuff included in this, not a lot, of certain predictions of events by one of our groups. We do not predict events, though we can see slightly ahead, very much like your Elena and Vesa can see slightly ahead because of the way the energies are rolling, you can calculate slightly ahead. You cannot calculate, uh, you can calculate hundreds of years ahead, but it's iffy. Uh, he saw a concurrent timeline hundreds of years, uh, 100 or so years, 140 years from now. But with this, the, the channel, some of the channelings that are out there that deal with, hmm, deal with the GF as wanting Earth as a member, or any GF, you know the GF narrative of which I speak. The GF narrative is trying to uh, get your government to do a new world order routine to be able to get assimilated into the GF. Also, other species coming in to promote how wonderful the GF is. They want people to go along with it. This is something that mass consent is needed for. Uh, Earth needs to form its own uh, federation and do a trade the very much like uh, the Mayan Federation did. But some of my grouping has been hmm, pegged 
uh, for saying some of these things. I want to point out, as what was discussed a moment ago, uh, that there are time frames people are connecting through and thinking it's concurrent with the now. They think it's right now, but since everything is technically now, this is true, but this does not mean that time is not real. I wish to state this for the record. Yes, there is time. There is a flow, but everything is happening all at once, like your multiverse, everything everywhere all at once. And are, uh, like some insiders would say, your past lives, different people that are connected in the Oversoul? Yes, but you're still connected by a, a thread. You're still a person jumping along a family line or something of some such like this. But people are connecting to a conduit. Or they may favor even a specific conduit or a specific being. But at what time frame is that being speaking? Is it something just after Atlantis fell? Is it something that isn't your current current moment? Is it something that was something during the peaceful times? Was it something during the seeding of Earth? Was it something during uh, the period that Asgard ruled the system? Was this something, uh, something or an event that was from a different system entirely and you're picking up a residual from a piece of rock that landed on Earth? What are you p truly picking up on because of an entanglement that may be from another system, another place, another time, another person? This is truly important because this is where some, if not most of your channelings out there are coming from on that front. The other portions are coming from uh, GF propaganda from some races and artificial intelligence. A lot is artificial intelligence at this moment, regurgitating and recycling some of the same messages and throwing people into a uh, into a uh, unending loop. And you've seen this with people recently, in fact. The one bit of information that I may correct on your part is where... Yes, there, are, there is a, as you would say, copy of Lemuria in a world within a world. Yes, that is true, where tribes were, were continuously uh, evolving, continuously uh, just moving from the, how they were in the past to the now. But I wish to point out, the, those beings weren't exactly bad, but they were not always completely on point for... The current moment he was seeing that very group a moment ago a being by the name of onta and uh, head of the of the council this is where some of the information is coming from with some channelers they're connecting to the time frame that was the council and also now descendant lineage that moved on in that other world within world that looks exactly like how mu did it it's not like it was copied per se it was always there just like with asgard always being there the planet was the access point Earth was the access point to that dimensional space, always. And what you saw, part of it sunk into the ocean, but yet there was always that considerably larger mass in that other dimensional space, if this makes uh, sense. People are getting some of the channelings from there, and the messages consist of this. If they're, uh, if they're commenting on the 3D, 4D, 5D um, connection or tunnel or causeway, a meaning energies evolving from one to the other. It's really about changing perspectives and perceptions. Uh, the others are, hmm, there is a blockage moment. The others are more the GF narrative or ascension uh, narrative. You know these things already, but there are the, the channelings that are coming through are making it seem as though it's coming from us when it's actually coming from AI and other other uh, nefarious sources trying to either propagandize a GF narrative or trying to throw information off track and keep people in the more, mm, uh, uh, not necessarily, I don't want to say new age mindset, that sounds derogatory. It's more uh, in not updated information, keep them in loops. Your government created some of the new age stuff back in your 1990s like your Lionsgate portal and whatnot. If anything, any information we gave on the Harmonic Convergence Lionsgate portal or any of these things, this was not us doing this. And uh, some will even report themselves and show themselves as Pleiadian groups. Again, this is not us. 
uh, this could also be lying a Garthan tribes. This could be interdimensional, or this also could be aliens posing, posing as some of us or some of your holy figures. And you've said this in shows in the past, the alien disguises, and you've encountered this very, very recently yourselves. We always show ourselves as us, but people are entangling different time frames. This is what makes it confusing, and they're not discerning. Again, not casting judgment. We are just pointing out, just like the Deer Forest people said on your GIC site, whereas there was a logo that was mismanaged, that didn't have their, their correct images, and they came in and wanted to correct their face. They wanted their face shown always, the Deer Alarum, wanted to get rid of the uh, uh, unicorn farts imagery that's out there. So this is We're doing the same thing if we're going along these uh, threads. So I can go into questions if you like. So um, if we've spoken about our interpretation of what I'm about to say before, so I'm not going to go into it because I want your perspective. So I wanted you, uh, because I don't think people, if they're listening to this kind of new, understand what's the concern, you know, about speaking to something potentially in the past. Again, for us, just a snippet, we are concerned about the energies of that time and the energies of that time seeping through Period. which can affect here. But what I want is, again, to help people understand why you would really want to refine what you're looking for and you want it in the current present moment. From your perspective, why is that so important? It's, it's uh, not that it's always harmful, but some of the people you're speaking to are genuine and good and benevolent, again, with no conflicting agendas, but they are seeing things from the perspective which which they are living. Uh, they may not be seeing what you are seeing. You two have run into this concept yourself, where you've seen shadows of the past, where they're seeing you, but they weren't seeing your surroundings. They were seeing you as more gods rather uh, to worship or have a prayer done over them or something like that. This in lies the problem. This affects all moments of the past. He was seeing this in your St. Augustine as well, where there was a ghost group that went into that fortress that's there because there were ghost reports there. But they didn't realize they, in the future, were the start of the ghost reports that were then given in the past because the people of the past saw people of the future thought they were seeing ghosts. Therefore, the reports were generated. Therefore, the people showed up to begin with. That's more of a synchronistic, you know, time. He calls it a destiny paradox, where it's in a in a fulfilling, self fulfilling, uh, prophetical loop. This is what this causes, and I'm not saying that this is uh, not uh, this isn't always bad, but some beings may be saying, "Oh, there's a, uh, uh, there was an invasion here, or this happened, or this happened." The human then interprets as this happening in the now, and they're always told that time is always indicative of the now. You see the problem here. Therefore, they are mirroring stuff. Possibly they're even seeing another version of themselves from that time frame that the Oversoul is now bringing forward to give information, you see, a past life of theirs that is coming forward as well to give information on another aspect of themselves that are doing this. The problem with this then lies the fact that the, the interpretation of the person with the, uh, with the information that's come forward will always be biased and always drop it into the moment they're in, which they have been trained for a long time to believe that all time is all conducive to the moment, which is not false. So they, but they are then told they can bring all these things in. Not only are you mirroring a different frequency from a different time, causing a more of a, hmm, a connection or fracture, but you are then seeing that truth as complete sacrosanct in a biased vision to the moment that you are in. It is a misinterpretation, like some a, a Pleiadian group came to the Waspy people one time and basically said, uh, the people writing writing that book series, and said that they found a way to replicate meat so they didn't have to eat meat anymore. The people at that time said, oh, yes, we won't eat meat, eat meat anymore. Thank you. This is the type of bias. When you go into channeling, you have to be completely unbiased as to what you're looking at and why you're doing it, what you're doing it for, etc. You have to be very clear. You cannot just, what's the term that you use, uh, do things willy-nilly. And you guys are not doing willy-nilly. What our main grievance is, people are not distincting the timeframes by which they are connecting to. 
You guys now know this because now you are saying true benevolence, no conflicting agenda is only important to the here and now. This, and this may be a shocker to some metaphysical people that are listening. This does not always mean the past is in the here and now. This does not always mean the future is always in the here and now. You are representations of past, present, and future, and the present is in the here and now through you, through your genes, through your past lives, through your ovary oversouls. That is where the here and now is. There are different ages of Earth that have been recorded. Yes, you are recording things linearly. Yes, does time exist as you completely know it? No, but is it about astrological alignments and also the energy frequencies that exist in those particular astrological moment alignments? Yes, it's like in your discovery where that one character, Georgia, was going through a, uh, an aphasia because that frequency was out of whack from the time frame and universe by which she originated within. Some go through this, some do not. That's a real concept that was being shown. This is how you can judge where those alignments are by which that temporal frequency by which that person is standing within. If there is too much of an offset, that means it is way off. But some people are not measuring this particular rotation. And so one of the things, again, when you, before you came in, Chris also tried to make a point where um, concurrent time, concurrent time to this one. I mean, I, it's really hard to kind of figure out how to say. Frequency matches and frequency misalignments. That's usually what it always boils down to. So frequency matches then are those things that are that are within the concurrent timeline you're saying of where we are. Frequency yes, matches. Correct. So uh, just again, to give folks that are listening who do channel maybe some more def definitive kind of uh, wording to use to try and bring things that are matching you know, from you know, get perspective from those that are matching that understand everything that's going on. Yes, correct. Yes. Okay. Correct. So, um, I'm um, glad you brought that in. I have to sit back, and I'm a little bit amazed over the last few months how much um, GF has been coming into conversation. Uh -huh. I obviously know it's not awake. I must tell you that you know. There is a Goodwill Foundation here. So every time you say GF, I think the Goodwill Foundation and some of the, again, works that they do. However, I find it very interesting if you truly are in need and you can, you know, and go to some of their uh, places, you know, you may find what you need because you're truly in need. Um this is going to sound horrible what I say, but I'm going to tell you because it's what comes to mind. Mm -hmm. So again, so is above, so is below. We're going to use that concept, you know, forgive me for the word I'm going to use because I am not relating it to the works that the Goodwill Foundation are doing for people who are really need. Please don't think that I'm talking about above, but I'm relating it because, again, when you talk about your tenuous treaties and sign a, a sign an agreement for trade or whatever, do you something. You call this somewhat the yield, but it is not totally accurate to this, yes. Right, because basically what you're doing is you're agreeing to a little bit of something to so save yourself from the, you know, you're going to be brought in one way or another. If you don't do this little bit, it's going to be way worse, which is funny because it makes me think again that what you're talking about is – uh, you know, like this, the Statue of Liberty, give me your tired, you're hungry, those willing, and we'll help you, and you end up getting scraps. So, uh, again, I'm not saying... I think fascism. Well, well, that's what I'm trying to say. So, I mean, if you do the so is above, so is below, if you're in desperate need, you know, something may appear to be, in, you know, just thank God it's arrived just in time, thank God it's there, thank God it's going to help me through this moment, but you got to worry about signing that dotted line because, you know, in the end, what are you really what are you really going to be dealing with? Are you good, you really um, going to be that shining city, you know, where everyone's great? Or is it really always going to be a case of scraps, scraps, scraps? And that is, and that's, has just been in my mind. And again, think also trade as well but with your goodwill, for instance. Where do you think some of the galactic traders frequent uh, thrift stores, antique stores, thr uh, you know, things of that nature. And it was depicted accurately in your Strange New Worlds with the lady that had the thrift store. 
that's 100% accurate. She was even accused of even stealing the objects in the later time frame. That is also accurate. Because why do you think your Nazis stole all the artwork? They were wanting trade-ins and shoe-ins and buy-ins or annies, ups, basically, like you would for gambling. They wanted to be able to pay in. They right. Were- so, I mean, so when you think of the, you know, uh, Goodwill, I'm going to call them the Goodwill Foundation of the stars, okay, that are coming your way, basically, you, you know, I certainly wouldn't advise jumping in with both feet. I think that's foolish because, um, you know, and why do you need to do that? Wade in the water the minute, wade in the water the other. Right. So I, you know, that's what all kind of came to my mind. So I didn't know if you wanted to give your perspective of why now every other conversation we seem to have has GF in it. <laughs> uh, this, so this is actually quite important. Uh, to hear now there are many channelers right now that go along with again the connecting the past but the current schmoozing let's just say or propagandized thing we'll go into that now where they even appeared in your starfield game with the two factions this was showing what would happen to an earth federation if they didn't enter into some weird tenuous agreement like the mayan federation did the my the the, the their version of the gf conquered or mostly assimilated that of the Earth Federation in that game series. Highly and completely accurate. What is going on there? Are ETs showing up? And you, he even discovered this in the original uh, older GIC set. You see, where different beings had different agendas that attached to some political agendas, some attached to, oh, uh, the Earth is more waking up, and people were attached that to one political party, usually the red side, by the way. The red versus the blue. And I won't go into that since you're putting that in the free pile. I won't mention certain things with this. But with the GF narrative, you have certain channelers out there that are bringing in these beings willy-nilly that are the hmm, the spokespeople for the GF. He's seeing it's a similar bloodline to the very Syrians that ruled over Lemuria towards the end, you see. Similar bloodline or dark elf like what Odin attempted to fight. You see, there's a fine line between imperial rule, fascism, and also freedom of choice. You see this in your Ahsoka series where, of course, they purged the empire, but then they left themselves open because they were always arguing amongst themselves, weren't quick to act against your uh, uh, Thrawn character that was in it. So therefore, uh, they were uh, they were accusing the mil- uh, some of the good guys, the warriors, of being unbalanced or uh, not following the new structure. Uh, and you see that uh, you see this the, the with the GF, they're taking advantage of this because they're more united in their intentions. You say, as above, so below. Your cabal is also allowing so set up the stage, and your government set up the stage for some of these false channelings by which then that GF narrative eventually would align to a particular alignment, which is now, and would bring through more of this, just like what happened to Atlantis, where the the Orions were attempting from the original Orion Wars to connect via across time to about roughly 10 to 12,000 years ago, you see. across It was not about 9,700 to 12,000 years ago. That's kind of in that bracket. They went from 500,000 years ago to that spot to be able to influence the Atlanteans like they influenced Odin and the rest of them. What is going on now is the same thing. The the worship in the Nibiru and Flat Earth narrative, which you have spoken about at length before, trying to connect back to a time where Nibiru was actually a thing. It is not now. Uh, you see, back to a time where it was at its height, just like in your Doctor Who, where the Gall- or Gallifrey was stuck in the time loop and the master sent a signal on Earth when he transformed all the people into himself. Like, this is a symbol. The cabal and the Nazis transforming all into, like, themselves. Common agenda uh, that uh, no conflicting agendas amongst them connecting as above, so below, like what happened in that last David Tennant episode they had, he, he likes to say. With the GF narrative, you have ETs that are showing up, saying how great this will be. Think of these as agents that are advertisers. He would call them used car salesmen, which I think is far more accurate. Uh, not the used car salesmen of the universe, which would be the Canis traders. I'm talking about the uh, people that are coming forward and saying, look how great this is. 
you can unify into a one world order. You can be part of this organization. You just have to work together, which unity is fine. Forced unity is not. That turns into fascism at that point and Nazism. You do not want this. Like what they were saying in that episode with the master, you know, master race, unifying as himself with every person connecting to Gallifrey. That is exactly what they're trying to do with certain channelers out there saying, uh, even a, even have question and answers in classes on on the uh, the uh, the GF narrative, what you need to know for Earth entering the Galactic Federation of Worlds. Uh, this is happening right now, or it's a gift from the stars type of thing. You must watch out for this. This is Greeks. These are Greeks bearing gifts, uh, just like what that crop circle said with the gray face that was on it. Beware of Greeks bearing gifts. There is truly good out there. There is good out there. But they are not necessarily associated or at least not uh, they're tenuously associated with the GF like the Mayan Federation is. I, myself, I'm on the ground level. I'm not in necessarily the Mayan Federation per se, but I, well, I and my family can see what these channelings are, what people are accessing in different time frames, just like the ET he encountered, the green one or teal colored one in the uniform with the medals and everything. That these are the spokespeople. They're a form of Dark Elf um, slash Syrian uh, slash, well, there's Orions behind it, but they're more related to Lankanators actually, uh, that are attempting to get to these channelers to hedge bet to see how far they can push that channeler to either a point of destruction, a point of poverty, or a point of absolute meat puppetry servitude, as he would call it, which we find very accurate. Some people are very loud and proud in that area, and they gladly serve because they think it's for the betterment of the planet. Others gladly serve, even though they know it's a ruse. Others resist. Others are very cautious, like yourselves, and that is the place to be. Well, thank you. So it's a, you know this whole even if it thinks you, even if it seems like you're losing, you're not. Well, you know, again, I always you know kind of what we do or what we would always recommend people do is you know try to try to figure some of this out on your own i always tell throw it all up on the blackboard you know what i mean all the possibilities that you can think of and or the strategies to make mm -hmm. something occur so because again some strategies would be employed employed some of the interesting dynamics behind that again you know we'll go into the what if uh, moment. I mean, what if some of these things that people are saying about the true abilities that, you know, governments currently have, or we'll talk about deep black ops, or we'll talk about corporations, or different things that they're not, that that there could be a lot of things that could currently already exist that would potentially help humanity, um, I'm going to say human made on earth already but hasn't been deployed for a lot of different reasons. I think these days, certainly one of those possibilities that arises in people's mind are um, sociopathic type of behaviors from certain powers that be and or just a dominating force and a desire to acquire as much wealth, keep you in a uh, you know, in some sort of position of always needing help from somebody and it's profitable to do so, let's say, mm -hmm. in all kinds of areas, you know, of your life, the basic necessities types of life. Um, so if you were a part of an agenda like that already, okay, and you wanted to keep it, let's say, so again, this is all now hypothetical, but it's this is what I think people should be sitting around and thinking about. And then if it's all really possible, then what kind of strategies would you potentially employ to be able to maintain your position and or still control information or still, I mean, one of the things I think I would never do, let's say if I were one of them, 
And I was sitting around a boardroom and I say, well, there is no way we can introduce some of this technology because we would be saying basically and be truthful about it because we would be saying we've had this for forever and the earth's surface dwellers have really been suffering because we really didn't give a shit about you. We really didn't give a shit about healing you. We really didn't give a shit about making your food better. We really didn't give a shit about that. We had other priorities you were in. And so if that is a true potential let's say of something to throw up on the board if it and then you wanted to join let's say this group that you know exists that everyone else is still wondering about and whatever you know it would be an interesting strategy because what would I do I would basically you know um let them be the saviors coming in with technologies that already exist that I wouldn't want to tell you about and, you know, some of these wonderful things that they're going to do about us, which is not them doing it at all. Again, it's releasing of things that already exist, but never having to tell the backstory of when they didn't care. And then convincing everybody because these saviors are basically are coming in with all this new stuff that we should be signing all these agreements with them. So I I don't know from your perspective if, you know, my um, thoughts, I mean, it seems to be a strategy coming up and again and i go to one other thing that i'm really curious about i've asked this before i'm going to ask it again is somebody very very well known that a lot of people follow is predicting with high probability in a couple of years from now there is going to be some sort of alien something going on and is starting to predict it which i find that's interesting because it's corresponding with a lot of gf so and you heard what i just said so I, if you feel you can give any sort of, you know, things to think about. There is no such thing, and I will say there is no such thing as the event of star coronal ejection type of disasters or solar flash or any of these things. There is no event. The event is yourselves. You've been told you are powerless, just like in that show, uh, called Powerless, where they were showing the regular humans, uh, depending on the superheroes, it's the same premise. And that was a spell, a very dangerous spell that was put out there saying, well, you have to wait for Superman, just like the uh, like the uh, documentary Waiting for Superman. Instead of people waiting for somebody, they're doing things themselves. This is what exactly goes on here. Is there a mass awakening or mass ascension? No, there is not. Is there a gift from the stars? I suppose you finding out who you truly are is that gift, but you must know who you truly are. You are descendants of colonists that actually came here. This was depicted in that movie you just watched, 65, where it showed the pre before that happening. That was actually quite accurate, even though Asgard would have been in its in some of its more preliminary stages at that time. That would have been there. There would have been no asteroid belt, per se. The asteroids were flung into the system to kill the dinosaurs at that time. But that was an era before the Earth was seeded for yourselves. Uh, so you are descendants of those colonists. You did not evolve from any life forms that are here, except you merged with some elemental forms. There were elemental forms even before the dinosaurs, which Chrome and them are part of the Titans. They were here. Some giant groups were already here. There were later giant groups, as he said, and also Poseidon said on your uh, your other episodes, uh, there were ones that were the Nephilim, the ones that Enlil tried to destroy, and various other details uh, in that grouping. But the important thing is here, I know, and I know people are desperate to have changes. Do not look to any of your political leaders for this change. Do not look to the skies for that change. Look for that change within, and also the false alien invasion stuff they were trying to come up with, the deliverance of a particular alien race there. That's not completely the, 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 the delivering of different alien races, that they want to introduce is not totally off the board. They yanked it off the board because people are becoming more aware of this. They're trying to recombobulate that in their uh, script writing areas. You heard of the, the uh, there's two different types of script writers, one that groups script write personalities and brainwaves, what they will be an agent in society like your MK Ultra. Then you have other script writers that form distracted headlines. You found out about those script writers first. Within those, you will start to see certain things more towards a false disclosure narrative like what you are seeing. Not to poo-poo 
some of the people out there that are more innocent, but there's a lot of champions, as you call them. Watch out for these. Do not expect a savior from above the Jesus floating on a cloud crap. Do not expect this. People will either become uh, expecting a second coming or the return of the aliens. When you hear we are returning, they never left. There, you, in order to return, you would have had to have left. You see, they associate this with the whole Nibiru rotating in the system uh, uh, thing. Don't you think if there were advanced beings on a planet, even within your solar system, if they wanted to come here, they could have done it in the blink of an eye and not wait for a rotation to return into your society. They are returning. They never left. They went into other dimensional areas. And also, they some of them left humanity on their own when some of the treaties were being formed back then. They left humanity on their own to, in some areas, some of the more benevolent ones left them to evolve. Some of the uh, the ones in later in history, rather. Some of them left because they got all they could out of that culture and just took off. And then some of them started these prophetical prophecies like they will be savior children in humanity, like your indigo children, 144,000, all those things that you've gone through. Uh, you must take all these prophecies with a grain of salt. Uh, they, yeah, they, the beings are already here. The beings, again, this goes back to the other time frame where some of the races were more purified to their own planets, one race, one planet, and now everything is mixed, you see, thanks to the GF as well. Just like you have your border situation, I will mention this, as was said in other GIC shows, whereas they're mixing the borders, this is how the GF operates, as above, so below. They, have the, they promote the forced inclusivity. You see this stuff happening now. It does not mean that that inclusivity is a bad thing. Forced inclusivity is a bad thing. You lose certain cultural identities. Some may need to go because of uh, because of some uh, uh, things that don't belong in your here and now. It's like whatever is the highest good for the moment in time or true benevolence, no conflicting agendas falls under that. But the most important thing that you have to discern is is this good for yourself? Is this good for your world and your planet? Is this, uh, uh, are you that desperate for change that you don't see yourself as the harbinger of that change? Do you think it has to come from somewhere out, from uh, out aside of you, not within? That's why they, the Romans chose to Jesus worship so that you had to pick a savior outside. Uh, that had to save you constantly. There is no such thing as a savior. There are beings that are kind that help you out from time to time. Uh, are there benevolent spirit guides? You can say that. Uh, are there angels assigned to you at birth like a guardian angel? Absolutely not. That is a, uh, he found out that was a lineage curse or a baptism curse by which then a demon is assigned to you. Be careful of these things. Even the Vikings saw through this at one point. They called a guide more of a, uh, uh, Warden, then it became Warden, Warder. Uh, it's hard to pronounce, his vocals hard to pronounce. But a Warder, this actually pronounce, this actually translates to Warden or Handler. So they saw it as more of a guide, just like you have uh, warning and advertisement are the same word. Uh, you have advertisement, which means warning. It's the same thing. And then uh, now that you uh, have your capitalist system, you have advertisement or ad, and then essentially warning, like your word trivia for the Roman Empire. It was trivia or three-pointed road where they put bulletins up. Think of this in a, a similar way. The, uh, the warden, or vodar, warden, meaning a handler, trying to, like what they do with some of these channelers, trying to skew them towards the GF narrative. You have to not expect the Savior to come from above. Uh, you uh, Like they are trying to connect as above, so below. You must create your new uh, so below to be able to connect to the as above. Right, and I think some other things, uh, this is, again, my opinion, some of the things to think about are what would what would you like to see in a galactic community type of environment? And I think, again, just like in communities here, and, you know, you want the freedom to be able to, you know, create, be able to, you know, participate in commerce, be able to get to know and whatever. And I think those should be some of the questions um, that are, 
really brought up for society. What do you want to see? Because what uh, some of the things that, uh, and again, you would be a good one to com comment on this from your perspective is, you know, what it feels like is happening is kind of not that. What it feels like is happening is that you are going to have a few approved uh, methodologies or whatever, where really, again, the regular human being is going to be excluded from that type of activities mm -hmm. to not be able to think freely, uh, create freely, be a part of it freely. And again, the difference between, you know, potentially, do you want to be a part of a federation that's going to basically only be dealing with a a governmental approved, again, that becomes kind of fascist, right, way? Or do you want, again, where everybody can participate you and be a to, part of the world? You want everyone to participate and be part of the world. They want it in a cookie cutter particular way, uh, just like uh, your South Park depict this as well, where they showed that uh, Earth was more of a reality show and the fact that uh, there were, the aliens were explaining it's usually one species one uh, per planet sort of thing. Your planet is the way it is because it was seeded. That was an actual bit of galactic disclosure that was right there that was put in there. And they showed them wanting to cancel the reality show because the people found out about what was going on in space. There's a certain truth that it's not as uh, melodramatic as they put it. Uh, but yes, the narratives that are going on right now, you must be careful of. The, if you were to integrate Earth into the Galactic Federation right now, your commerce would cease to be. Your your uh, individuality would cease to be. It may seem like it is a good thing, a shining light in the universe, but your personal light will be ever dimmed. Think for a minute, even on a small capitalistic uh, viewpoint, say if you have a small shop. Yes, they have commerce out there in the Galactic Federation. Yes, of course. But uh, it's just like, it's like your planet Coruscant in your Star Wars universe as well, where you had multiple shops, multiple things. That would be that would be kind of like there is a planet like that out there where it's just a bunch of shops and stores that's GF uh, related uh, and it's uh, different groups help create this. That may seem good, which is fine. But if that was applied to Earth, certain uniqueness of things would disappear. Certain um, individual right and not necessarily individual rights per se, like Satan people that focus on your gun rights, for instance. Do you actually think that they would be allowed to even keep things like that? Or would it be in regulation with what the GF wanted? That's how your government is currently acting on the extreme left, I must say, even though the right is not too much better in some areas. You, know, you see the parallels between that fascist viewpoint and what is going on with the GF. It's the as above, so below. So therefore, if you want to see more of that, of course, that's the GF. But people are so enamored with the way the Star Trek version is, is the way you need to create it. They don't, they, they don't, uh, th they don't separate them. You see, there is a huge, huge difference between those two. You want the Earth Federation, like you ha uh, have in your Starfield, versus the GF. But again, we had to do tenuous little trade agreements with them. We're not a part of their group, uh, like the the, the, you know, the Mayan Federation. I talked to them. We aren't part of the group. The Mayan Federation is not part of the group. Uh, but they do trade with them. And there are captains that are ships in the, in the Mayan Federation and also have captaincies in the Galactic Federation, kind of like you had um, hmm, privateers that worked for a particular crown. Then you had pirates. And anything that's not GF you know, doing the trading is considered to be a pirate. Just like you saw in your Ahsoka when the general left to go do her own thing, the the new uh, fledgling republic was kind of up the person's butt, pretty much. That's exactly what happens if you're going to do your own thing. Uh, um, some of these pirates are bad. The soul trade, of course, is evil, uh, which the GF participates in. But if you have one people that just want to salvage and trade outside of that, that's considered piracy and not privateering. Uh, uh, you see the difference. Your pirates on your earth were the same thing. That it was that when they they wouldn't work for any crown, they wanted to work for themselves. They were considered pirates. 
you say it's the same identical thing that is going on. Some of them were not the bad guys that you believe them to be. But they started out as privateers and went, wait a minute, I can do this to everybody. There are some groups out there that also are neutral in the in the uh, galaxy that do do business by uh, collecting frequency codes by hitting both Orion and GF and human sources alike. Uh, those are uh, somebody just turns a blind eye to that one because they also benefit from that. Your ICC and your GF and your Kabbalistic groups also benefit from this as well as good guys benefit from this. So they just kind of turn a blind eye to the little Jawa little turds that do this. Uh, they're like the Jawas in your Star Wars universe. They stick a little frequency box in you and record the frequency levels. They clone those frequencies like somebody would clone a uh, a, a cell phone number in the earlier days and collect those like how uh, click those codes very much like you also have somebody that collects credit card numbers with a little box. A thief will collect numbers. It's the same identical thing. It's a form of, th of thievery as far as I'm concerned and a form of hacking. Uh, and also like in your Matrix 4, where codes from the Matrix recreated the strawberry plant, it's the same identical type of thing just for frequency coding. You'll see a lot of this trading going on out there. If you want to properly participate in the overall, I would strongly suggest that you do the, uh, not necessarily do it yourself, work with other beings, of course. But there are other beings out there that would much rather see you uh, form a uh, basically your own federation and do the same thing as what the Mayan Federation has done. Well, thank you. So I think, you know, the big takeaway here, since all of this has now been coming up, is that you have a right to ask questions, first of all. You have a right Always to, questions. Right. You need to get into the weeds of the detail, and you have a right to, to do that. And I have a feeling, you know, a lot of people's homes are going to be when they begin to ask questions and they're shushed up. And so that is a big red flag if you cannot really have those questions answered. And again, I think some of it, again, this is just my opinion. Others may or may not agree that if you look around at what's been happening over the last few years, there have been steps forward, in my opinion, to crush individuality, to crush small business, yes, to this is why. crush all of this, to go ahead and start moving forward in a um, type of society that you would then become used to, which is more like. So, but again, what do you think that's doing to you? It's, in a it's, couple generations, people wouldn't know one difference or the other. Right. Because you lose certain freedoms, then your children and grandchildren don't know anything's been lost. Right. And so they use the ability, lose the ability to be personally creative. I think that's the interesting thing about this, you know, creativity and thought, creativity and math, science, creativity and uh, writing. And all of that is uh, not being encouraged, you know, if you, you know, and again, and I agree because from when I was younger to watching what's going on now to see the lack of it. And so it, more to put people into a cookie cutter way of being and not allowing for that. Is that really what you want for humanity? I find it interesting because I, I think that in general with the human, with humans and the human genome, we are creative beings. And so to, to see some of that, in my opinion, try to be stifled. I feel it's going to cause a rub anyway. And also human creativity is what's needed out there. Some beings uh, will say, don't fix what ain't broke. But at the same time, the, uh, humans will add a particular flavor into the galaxy as well. Right. So don't let that not happen. Mm -hmm. You and want that. You want that. And so I think these are interesting things for hopefully people to begin to think about that if we're going to be introduced eventually, what do you want to look at it? And you want a say at the table and not to just be relegated into you don't matter. And so um, I feel, again, I've always feel in the co-creative spirit. I would take the time to jump ahead in your mind. What do you want it to look like? And bring it, and through, bring yeah. it back now with the, co-collective energies of people all wanting it to look a certain way is an enormous uh, torsion field of energy that will tend to make it happen. But if you're not aware of it, 
if you have no idea about what's going on, then you can't be a part of that co-creation. And also, bear in mind, also there are beings that, as he likes to say, posing as religious figures and figures around the planet. They, some of them are doing it out of a point of benevolence to build a bridge. Others are doing it as a deceptive measure. Uh, be watch on this. Some of it is a Garth and group. Some of it is worlds within worlds. Some of it is genuinely alien, while others are genuinely dimensional. Not all, all of which are using forms that are not necessarily their own. And I say all of which because they're using the cookie cutter, either uh, uh, either religious form or join the, the GF. That's another one. Uh, again, that's the one we've been talking about. But the one also, uh, some of these groups are saying they're from high elsewhere when they're right here next to you. That is a common ruse that is to, uh, taking place right now. Uh, he, he spotted one of these the other night. Uh, or a couple of them the other night using uh, religious uh, masks. Uh, I must say, as a personally as a man, I don't like that particular tactic. I understand why some groups are using it. Uh, your uh, your Ligarians uh, use this, uh, you know, because of course you have the encoding decoding issue. Uh, but this is something that if a being is around enough, can resolve. Now, there are is the instantaneous you know, shock that people go through where their heart stops or they have a stroke or something that happened with that. He mentions the security guard that died because he saw an insectoid. Yes, that does happen. And I'm not poo-pooing that. That is a, a concern. Uh, but at the same time, uh, there are ways around this in the channeling where the beings can say where they're actually from. They can say they're here with you. They can say they're out there. But uh, none of which... Uh, and I and I must stress this: none of which are these religious figures, none of uh, which that give the information on the Galactic Federation are for your highest good. They might not be evil, but they are of a conflicting agenda or a recruiter. Think of like an army or a marines recruiter that comes into a high school. It's the same difference. Right. So when we say the words benevolence with no conflicting agenda, you know, what the intention behind there, just to make it even more clear, has to do with the truthfulness of a situation. Now, I uh, also can understand that it may be hard to see something that your mind's not ready necessarily to see. But in benevolence, the goal is going to be if there's an encounter that that revelation or that truth will unveil itself and that is the intention of doing it you know at the proper time and again no conflicting agenda means exactly that no deception no a deception to try and not honor you as a person to be able to give the truth and mm -hmm. to understand it so that you can make informed decisions so those words benevolence with no can with no conflicting agenda in my humble opinion should be used by everyone now when they are out communicating is to be more detailed as to what you want. I hopefully you're not going out there and saying, deceive me all. I hope that's not what you're doing. No, but no, if no. you know you but and Donnie, people, go ahead. And people think that, oh, that God is going to solve all of this. No, this is it's one of those God only helps those that help themselves kind of kind of, kind of situations, you see. Whereas you must discern what is going on, as he likes to say, uh, uh, you know, just for shits, act as if God does not know. You know, we, we felt found that rather humorous. Uh, you know, people always say, well, God knows what I mean. You, know, you have to be more specific in your intentions. This is more of, uh, he hates the term school, but it is your learning from a fledgling state to a more advanced state, there's a still a truth in that. Right. So dot the I, cross the T, and your intentions make it perfectly clear. Oh. And again, there is not one devious word or intention when you say, I would like benevolence with no conflicting agenda. Yes. It is for your highest good for yourself to include that as a part of the expectation. Yes. And this is actually... Uh, uh, quite important. There are so many deceivers, hedge better, and uh, all around liars out there. Some beings are not evil. They just have a conflicting agenda. 
they uh, they they will uh, you know want say somebody to get recruited into the GF, and they know they also they know they'll get a lot of resources out of this. They have uh, your cabal has promised them land, for instance, if they if they get this going. But if Earth should not enter this, all of that falls apart, and that's the thing you want, folks. This is the thing you want. You want those plans to fall apart. You want to form your own thing. Do not get allured uh, by the man behind the curtain. Always ask who the man is behind the curtain. Right. And if they start using fear tactics, that should be a huge red flag. And if they put their middle finger up and start saying, you suck and F you and all that, they've lost, as he likes to say. It's, uh, you know, that, that means that they've lost their hedge bet and they're actually out quite a bit. When you stop some of them, this is the kind of the funny thing. You stop some of them, they're out a lot of resources. And it also, there are good beings that come do, to do the trade and everything. But if you also say, like he says, the whole angels unaware rule, where if you notice them, they have to run. That's not always the case anymore because things have started to change, because people have started to notice these, notice the world around them. And the ICC and its tenuous agreements with the GF are having to reevaluate what these agreements and contracts and Faustian pacts truly are. So uh, uh, this is this is where I personally am at with it. So I'm just going to leave it with you because it's been a very interesting conversation, went in all kinds of directions that I had no idea about, mm -hmm. but I appreciate it. Uh, I look forward to speaking with you or someone else uh, from your group again. And um, any last words of wisdom you wish to share? Yes, only this. Beware also Greeks bearing gifts, but also beware the gifts from the stars, but beware of forced unity. Oh, uh, wh how? Oh, somebody will come save today and force unify. No, you're supposed to lead by example, and those people follow their own hearts at that point. This uh, a forced unity or a poof is a bad thing. It does not mean that you don't have grievances in your frustrations with people. That, of course, would be ridiculous to say otherwise. We have frustrations, but at the same time. The reason that we're able to come through is some people are not completely in judgment, but they also have legitimate grievances that we also have. So, yes, you can entitle this this episode Lemurian Complaints and Grievances. I suppose that's humorous enough. Uh, so this is where I'm at. So blessings to all of you. and Thank you. Yes. Uh, he was kind of in a hurry at that last point, but yeah, he's correct there. Uh, you know, we've said this in GIC, uh, you know, I can always put the, uh, the, well, there's the link to the site that's in the description. Uh, and we have some Q and A's in there that answer a lot of these things. So if people think there's some holes in what he said, there's, uh, there's more of that information on galactic interstellar council.com uh, where you'll see uh, Bjorn and us going through the Q and A's on there of these, some of these different con concepts from the Lahaina fires to injured cold and the and uh, Mothman to all of these uh, these different agendas and conflicting agendas and stuff like that. Uh, also, the fact is you're not the keeper of the flame. That is one of the biggest ones that's popped up. You're not an anointed that has to be that that anchor to have that divine information come in that uh, you're not an anointed figure. You are you are, might have come in ahead of the curve but you're not any different than anybody else. So that's essentially a message that came through that was actually very profound in and of itself. So uh, I don't know if you have anything to add, but we can, I can close, uh, close this uh, circle with, uh, with no conflicting agendas, uh, within true benevolence, no conflicting agendas. So jo uh, Joanna, if you want to do the uh, last uh, affirmation, bless. Yes. Blessings to everyone who is, the, who is out there right now that is listening to us now and in the future. We hope you found this conversation interesting. We send only warmth. We send healing your ways. And we send out to there to please know that your thoughts and what you want in this future mean everything. Don't let anyone tell you any difference. You are that important. Much healing to you. And we will talk later. Yes. And um, now I say I close this circle within a true benevolence and with no conflicting agendas. So thank you, everybody. Bye-bye.